out to see the view, but then the local boys made good, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, put your hands together for the view. Questions that were um, submitted to RCI Records uh, to ask you guys, and then there'll be a short acoustic set following that. Okay, so we'll just kick off then. So, this is from a Tamara Fletcher. What made you all realise that now is the right time to get back together to record the album, and have you got plans for more albums? Um, we, had a, we had a record deal in place for ages that we never knew we had, and then we had loads of class tunes and um, way in there and even like tunes for the last record and we met up and it just, it was good, it felt class. We were always going to go and do another record, it was just whenever a good time was to do it and probably there will be another record after this as well, hopefully. So. Yeah. We get This is all, yeah, this is my question. So, were you also waiting for the right producer to come along? So, you, you had you thought on this one? Uh, no, nah, we, we decided and then we decided on the producer. Right. Yeah. Well, you've done the third record, so... Right. And we... He's got a place in Spain, so we're like, fucking, <laughs> let's go fucking Spain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like back in the day, we, were, we, we used to want to go there, we dreamed of like, recording any place outside or any place that wasn't in the middle of a farm in Wales. <laughs> and, and they were like, they always said, did they go, oh, do you want to go there? Maybe one day when you just, like, just get a cheer and shit. So we exercised with youth, and we went to Spain and we recorded <laughs> So this is from uh, Sean Maxwell. What was different about writing this album to any other in the past? Did anything change with being that bit older? Or was it more of the same sessions and feelings towards the writing? I was in a sunny place. Oh, that was good. And that, it's just the same process, it was just like, on acoustic, brought to the band, and then it becomes the view. And just, it's, it's always been the same process for us, we've never really tried to do anything mad or... Do you know what I mean? Just get the tunes done, that's it. Uh, she had, the, had all the tunes ready to go before he went to Spain. She went like right in the studio or anything. No, there was, a, there was a couple of songs that were wrote in the, that were kind of finished in the studio, and a couple of songs that were wrote in pre-production. Um, the song Exorcism of Youth, like we wrote that's the first song we've all written together in the room. Um, like from scratch. So that's the first time I've ever done that, so that was cool. And um, the hence why we, we made it the leading track, so that was um, that was an experience, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think there is something special about that place like Space Mountain. I think I'm not as sure if it's just because everyone are like, Oh, you're never gonna you're never gonna go there, but when we actually did get there, it's like, oh that is special man. But uh, no, it felt good. Man. Magical. Good. Yeah. Good. Listen, I think some people are having trouble hearing what's going on here, so you could, you could keep the noise down right to the back there. The view gets a bit of any noise. <laughs> <laughs> now, keep the noise down on a Friday night. <laughs> it's Friday night. Right? Uh, this is from Dale Kempsel. What is your song Glass Smash about? Is it just about smashing glass? It's the only one of your songs I can't get my nut around. <laughs> <laughs> As, it's sort of, that was one of them that just sort of, like when you wake up in the morning and it's just already there, ready to record. And, I mean, technically it's me that gets the blame for writing that, but, um, yeah, it's just one of them. Yes. It just sort of came there, and that's what it is, what it is, you know what I mean? Art was purely forums. I say, I'm still trying to work out myself. <laughs> okay, this is from Steve Clark. Has the set list for the upcoming tour been decided yet? And would it be possible to include Anfield Row, if only for the Caird Hall? The set list for tonight hasn't even been decided yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was something to think about. Anfield Row is meant to be in this set list, but fuck <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. This is from Kirsty Scullion. Oh. It's Kirsty Scullion in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Do you want to ask a question? Sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is for Kirsty. He's the same, can you speak louder than the mic? Could you just not hear us? Right, this is as close as it gets, you hear that? Uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is for Kirsty. Waiting a long time for this album, absolutely worth the wait, exclamation mark. Uh, what would you say is the best view album and why? Also, will we get to hear covers with Paolo live? <laughs> Um, I think we've all got different opinions on, and uh, I think we've all got all of each album for the same reasons. But we've all, it's the memories that you've got, like uh, the tour and the albums and when they were done and the songs that were written at the times. But it's, it's hard to say what's the favourite album. But um, what, what do you think? What does? Mm, I, I agree with you on that, like when you record them. Which which is a great album? That was a great time recording. Right. But uh, but the, I always think that we could have fixed it, but then you didn't fix it, so it's not broken, even if it's broken. <laughs> okay, and, but and Paolo's been asked a million times, and he keeps fucking shying away. <laughs> Just that when we're selling at the academy, he's thinking we're Billy Big Bass. He's doing ten idols. Aye man, I'll come down. I'll be great. Aye, aye. And then he fucks off. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Rainy, we don't need Paul. <laughs> so is that, is that your question's answered then, Kirsten? Yeah, it's <laughs> um, This is from Dale Campbell. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Okay. Dale Campbell, my mate told me this in the pub. If you can confirm, if it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> <going on. laughs> If it's true, the song Same Jeans, as well as the album title, has the lyric that's off the busker man. Ha oh sorry, it's a wee bit scrubbled this. Hats off to the busker man, with the harmonica in throughout the song as well. Is this a reference to Fast Eddie that kicks about the city street? Yes. Yes. Round of applause for Fast Eddie, come on. And he was always kicking about playing some harmonica, so. Let's go. What key are you in? What key? <laughs> okay, this is from Rogan Gibson. Getting a wee bit noisy out there again, I'm not about to hear the answer. <laughs> this is from Rogan Gibson. What advice would you give to young independent bands or artists for getting their music heard and to help grow their audience? Be yourself, do your own music and don't like to pander to anybody else, like do exactly what you want and then if you love it, other people will, will hopefully carry on. Yeah. Some man, just get out there and keep, keep fucking doing it man, that's how you got to do it. Don't overthink it, overthinking is a problem. <laughs> okay, this is from Alex, Alex Alexander. Are any of you guys... So good to name them twice. <laughs> Are any of you guys fans of David Bowie? And if so, what songs of his do you like? Uh, massive fans. Uh, my, my, my special favourite is Hunky Dory album. That was a big part of my life when I was younger. When I was playing FIFA and focusing on just the music and the pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cooks a good one. Yeah, David Bowie fan. And there's a second part to this question. Years ago you supported their own... Shut, Shut up! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Black! Uh, years ago you supported the Rolling Stones at Hyde Park. Did you manage to meet any of them? No. <laughs> uh, we, got, we got free PlayStation 4s, which is a big deal at the time. Um, so I think that... But uh, no, have you, have you not met them at Echo and the Bunnymen before? Nah, we never got to meet them either. No. <laughs> met the Beatles, met the Beatles, one of the Beatles. I think we've got to pay. I think we've got to pay. 
The stones I always gave you the swells. <laughs> yeah, that, that could play, but they give them a play space, they won't. Oh, 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 darling! <laughs> so, what, which Beatles did you mean? Uh, Tom Cannon. Oh. Yeah, he started crying when he found No, I did not! <laughs> You're fucking dead. <laughs> Okay, this is, a, this is the last question on this list here. It's from Don Floyd. Is Don Floyd then? No. Come on, Don! <laughs> Don Floyd. That yeah. sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. <laughs> the footballers normally have a set routine before a game, and individual players have their own routines and superstitions. When you guys are preparing for a gig, what's the normal routine and any superstitions? Um, I don't think there's superstitions. It's like I think some sometimes we try not to like look at the crowd, like because it's like the look at the. <laughs> I mean, it's, sometimes we played like an American Tears and that, and we've been going there after being like fucking number one over here and it's kicking off. You're like a big massive bust that pure suspends the side, you know. <laughs> when you're coming in, that it's like playing San Diego. <laughs> it's like three people there. <laughs> So you're like, it's in the end, I'm not looking. You got a stage like, oh, the disappointment's fine, it's just the same. <laughs> nah, it's, it's good, I don't think there's any superstitions. You've got a preparation in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay, that's all the questions that I was handed to ask you. Right, boys. But we could take a couple maybe from the audience if there's any. Oh, that's going to be massive. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it, don't do it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you made us. When you write your songs, do you write them all together or do you write like a song each in an album? Um, we, normally go, we normally write them separately and then bring them into the band and we kind of put them together and see, see how it goes. Yeah, that's not what happens. And, and as I say, the first, the first song on this record, the Exorcism of Youth song, was the first one we've done from start to finish uh, with each other in the room. Go. Anybody else? I have done a boat line. <laughs> <laughs> if you can come down, you can come down to the bar. I'm, I'm right here. Is that going to be a Glasgow gig in December? Glasgow, Glasgow next year. Oh, in summer, in summer, in summer. I was hoping for a Glasgow gig in December, like, he's a great game. Watch his space. Anybody else? Sir. Anybody else, sir? Where's our comrades? Can you come? Come down. I can't use all from Dundee, eh? But what? Dundee or Dundee United? <laughs> well, answer that. Lockie United, man. <laughs> Lockie United. Come on, Ed. Get the tunes on. Get the tunes on. Get the tunes on. Get the tunes on. Alright, this one's for you, Kieran. Who got you into playing bass? Because you got me into playing bass. Ah, that's all right. That was a bit of a weird one, because it sort of started jamming with Kyle and Pete on the guitar, and then it became sort of apparent that them guys were going to be the guitarists, and I was like, I'll take up the bass then. And then I was like, I was like, I never looked back. And what a bass player he turned out to be here. Cheers! We're going to clear the stage and then we're going to come down and do a shot for it.